go. Hello, ladies, and welcome back to my next episode of my podcast, Dating Tips for Single Women. I'm your host, Anja Boyd, founder of findwanalead.com. And today I have a very special guest here with me, which is Marla Mattinson. So let me tell you a little bit about, well, first of all, welcome, Marla. <laughs> Thank you. So, so great excited here. to have you. <laughs> so here's a little bit about Marla. Marla Mattinson is a frequent speaker on the topic of relationships and intimacy. And she has helped more than, okay, 12,000 couples including Academy Award-winning producers, directors and actors, NBA players, coaches, Grammy Award-winning artists, and entrepreneur millionaires over the course of her 22-year career. Wow. Okay. So just let that digest for a moment. Uh, Mala especially enjoys teaching busy entrepreneurs how fueling the passion in their relationship increases the income in their business. She guides couples in practicing extreme honesty in a safe and loving way that reveals dormant intimacy all couples are capable of experiencing. As honesty is, is expressed in relationship, hidden obstacles in the business become clear as well, right? How you do one thing is how you do everything. Mara yeah. supports couples to achieve success both in relationship and in business with an ease most only dream about when no longer so ma is going to reveal some secrets for us today yay Let's welcome mala <laughs> yeah, awesome you. oh i'm so excited i mean i happen to be in a relationship right i happen to be yes. in business so i have a lot of questions for you i'm ready so so tell me like a little bit more like how did you become so passionate about like really teaching like how to, you know, unleash that intimacy, right? And really get to those like hidden treasures in the cave that, that so many couples, you know, fear to enter into, right? I mean, let's yes. face it. Yes, I started as a doula, helping women through labor and delivery of their babies and postpartum many, many years ago. And because I was invited into that very intimate environment with couples, they started asking me intimate questions like, oh, how do we reconnect? Or, you know, mm -hmm. one partner would talk about the other one and the other partner would talk about back and forth, but through me. And so I, I just said, hey, let's come together and create some real communication here that's based in honesty. And so because of that, that was sort of way before coaching was even really an established career. Right. Right. 22 years ago, right? Yeah. It's a long time ago. And so I didn't even really know what I was doing at the time. I just went with it. I was very guided by spirit and I was invited to help coach couples on everything from during the pregnancy, how to clear karma for their incoming children, to oh, wow. how do you reconnect after the first year of having a child. So it was a really beautiful entry into this realm of intimacy that has become really the most important thing in my whole life is intimacy, whether it's mine with my partner or whether it's my business or my clients or just helping more and more people get intimate in their own life. Oh, I love it. It's so what I love about intimacy, it's so much the opposite of shame. It's really exposure. It's yeah, really I love right? That. Yes, it is. It's like when the shame or the guilt or the blame or the judgment comes up, if we can really sit with that discomfort and then invite our partners into our weird little ugly world of shame and guilt, then mm -hmm. that reveals that vulnerability that we're actually all craving. Ah, oh, it's so good. That really feeds right into like what we always talk about, right? It's like when it feels vulnerable, keep going, yes. you know, like keep yeah. going, keep going, like don't turn back. And in speaking of that, you know, tell me like what you've seen mostly and where, what stage of life are couples mostly in? Are they more like, you know, the first few years when you start to see those are more couples that come to you or those actually women who are a couple so more, you know, later on, like, Hey, we've been married for 10 years. The, you know, juice is kind of leaving. We're starting to depolarize where would you see like mostly the blind spots are for couples and when, when are they coming to you? 
It's a great question. I actually see couples in all stages of relationships. So some couples come to me early on, really in the beginning, usually before they get married, they're going to take the step into a longer commitment, a more intense commitment, and they want to make sure they're on the same page. And even if they have an incredible chemistry and they have great communication, most of the couples that I see are really based in growth. They really know that wherever they are now, they're going to want to grow way beyond that at some point. And they want to put sort of systems and structures in place. Ah, I love that. Actually, it's so funny. So they can scale their relationship, not just scale their business. Oh. But I think we teach couples how to scale their relationship, which means have even more freedom, mm -hmm. more intimacy, more mm -hmm. love, more passion, more playfulness, and more fun in their relationship that just gets bigger and bigger. And, and it's, it's really incredible. Oh, that's interesting. So it's like some couples are really coming in as a preemptive evolution. So they don't even wait until it's a forced evolution, but it's really, how can I be proactive? Let's, things, let's put things in place because all the other friends I talked to for married for 10 years, this is what they experienced, right? Yeah. So, so you're actually really attracting a high awareness. Yes. Of, like people have really a high awareness who come to you. A lot of the people who come to me, they're very aware of their material. They've done a lot of work already, um, therapy wise. They know themselves. They know that maybe they have some control issues. I tend to work with really high powered women. Cause I- Yes, know, not that I know anything about that, right? I don't know anything no. about that. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, you and I are both in that same category. And so how do you bring yourself in your business as a high powered woman right? And still be able to soften and receive from your amazing partner, right? Yeah. Whether it's it doesn't matter, right? How can you be that incredible business person and still learn how to receive? And, you know, actually that's my, my partner, he specializes in working with men who have mm -hmm. high powered women as their partners because he knows how to handle me and he knows how to handle high powered women. So he's amazing at working with men. Awesome. I think like my man and your man should totally meet. Like for sure, for sure. <laughs> so I happen to be a very intense woman too. I always say like, you know, if you can hold me, you can, you can teach any man to hold any woman, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. And, and it's interesting, right? Because so it's really about the art of transition. You know, how can, you know, how can you go full force in a business and, but then like to remember and almost like take your CEO hat off your, you know, energetic suit, so yes. to say. And so what do you see as like the biggest challenges there, like <laughs> with, with those high powered women that I don't know who you're talking about? Oh, I'll <laughs> tell you. I love this topic. This is, we could do a slumber party on this thing. Oh, I know. <laughs> we should do a whole telesummit on that, right? <laughs> I'd say, you know, the biggest uh, challenge that I see for women who are high powered women is they send mixed messages to their partners. So on one hand, they're saying, I want what I want when I want it. Mm -hmm. And we do. And at the same time, they're saying, please step up and be an incredible partner who's going to give me boundaries and tell me the truth and tell me no when you really mean no and not just people please me and tell me yes, dear, because you think that's what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. And that dynamic is probably the most challenging piece for couples to get is that when a man, let's just talk about, I'll just use men and women, but it, it could be women and women. It doesn't matter, right? When a man pleases his partner in the way by saying, yes, I'm going to say yes to whatever you ask for because I love you and I want you to be happy. When he mm -hmm. does that and she knows it's not true, she knows that he doesn't really want to say yes to that thing and she knows that's not true, he's basically training her to not listen to her intuition. Mm. You see what I mean? He's yeah. training her to not believe her intuition. Right. Because he's essentially lying, not on purpose, not with maliciousness, with love in his heart. Like, I want to please you. I want you to be happy. So yes, I'll go to the family dinner on Friday night mm -hmm. or Saturday night. But mm -hmm. really, 
he doesn't really want to. And when we as women feel any little bit of a lie, any little bit of a, hmm, mm -hmm. I don't really believe that you are a yes for that. Yes. We'll ask the worst question possible. Are you sure? Right. I am totally guilty of that, by the way. I still do it sometimes. <laughs> and then my sweetheart reminds me and he goes, Vic, don't ask me that question. Right? Because mm -hmm. he does tell the truth. He'll say, no, I don't want to go. Or I'll go if it's really important to you. Where is it on a scale from one to 10, you know? Yes. And so he tells me the truth about it. But if you ask your partner, are you sure? Then it, it just creates this field of doubt and mm -hmm. it makes your partner go, I said yes, like I said I would go. So it, you know, it creates a tension, an energetic tension and an actual tension that doesn't need to be there at all. So when your partner, if you have a male partner in particular, when your partner says they'll do something, your job is to say, okay, thank you. Never ask, are you sure? Kill that from your vocabulary. Hmm. What do you think of that? You know, it's interesting because I was just thinking of, you know, the integrity piece of a man, right? And like you're basically questioning and emasculating him in that moment. And he doesn't have a choice. He has to say yes, because otherwise he doesn't have an identity as a man, right? He's like, oh, no, I just like, you know, I'm a wimp and I just told you that, right? So, of course... And he might even believe it too. He might even be so disconnected from his own truth because on who knows how he grew up or what values he picked up somewhere, what it means to be man or. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah. I think it's so huge. And I love that trust piece and that it actually leads to that. Then we are also not trusting ourselves. Like we don't trust him. Right. And but then of course ourselves. Exactly. So within, so without. Right. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my God. I so love this. And I have this conversation all the time with my clients when I start kind of like dating more and it's, and when I have the feeling like, I feel like he's kind of like accommodating because he wasn't really interested in that theme, but now he's just kind of like reading up on it. But if he was so interested in it, why wasn't he already in it? Like why wasn't he naturally already attending those events? Right. So what do you tell women when they're like, well, okay, now you said I should just say, okay, but you know, how can I, engage him into like having like this authentic space right like where he can step into and feel still masculine and still feel empowered like what what do you recommend there for those powerful women well you asked a couple of questions in there what one, one oh, is okay. if, some, if someone i don't even it, notice that okay i love it, I love it. i'm <laughs> taking it apart it's so good <laughs> um one thing is when Two people, because I know most of your audience is for women who are dating, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you know if this is a, a good match? Mm -hmm. When someone gets interested in the events that you're going to and they're open to it and you're asking the question, well, how come they weren't interested in this before? If this is, if this is genuine, why weren't they doing it before? Well, yeah. the thing. When you connect with someone who's a great match, one plus one doesn't equal two. One plus one equals 10 or a hundred or a million. And so what happens is maybe they were waiting for you mm -hmm. to come into the picture to expose them to this type of event and they never even saw it before. It wasn't on their radar. Mm -hmm. And so you have to see, are they going to these events because they're genuinely interested or mm -hmm. they're checking it out and seeing and then they'll come out of it and, and make their own decision. But to doubt it from the beginning, I would just remove that. If somebody, mm -hmm. if your partner wants to come to some events, let them come. Mm -hmm. and, and even don't even ask a bunch of questions about it. Mm -hmm. This is an issue that we get into as women all the time. It's like we go to a thing and we go, oh, what did you think? How did you, did you like it? Did you not? And I'm, again, I'm guilty of that too. Yeah. Let them have their experience. Don't ask any questions. Check that out. Don't ask any questions. And see what they come to you with. Because I know for me, one of my biggest concerns when I was dating was, are they in this because I'm so intense and driven and excited about this thing? Or is it really coming from them? And I could easily influence someone to be excited about something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My personality and when I'm excited, it's easy to kind of go on that train with me. Right. So if I wait and I'm patient and I'm calm and I let them have their own experience and don't 
poke in there to find out what it is and I wait and let them open in their time. Then I can have a genuine interaction with my partner of, are you really interested in this? Does this do anything for you? Because it's coming from them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Patience is a big one for us high-powered women, right? It's like, tell me now, did you like it? Did you not like it? <laughs> right, right. And I also see, you know, so many times like women, sort of women that I work with at least, they date a lot of times the threes on the Enneagram. And so what happens is in stress, they integrate into the nine, which is the peacemaker, the accommodator, right? And so, so that's like uh, one thing that I always wonder is like, you know, to also pay attention to what kind of personality he is and and to look at okay see so does he tend to like focus more on the other person versus on himself right but yes and also when you're dating we have to listen to our thoughts so i can remember like the first time when i was dating when i realized how i was projecting all over the person i was i was dating i was on a date with i remember specifically i was in a bar i was talking to this guy we were on a date and he was telling me yeah my mom we did not have a great relationship and my last girlfriend um she just turned into a nightmare at the end and i heard my voice internally for the first time ever that said oh well he would never do that with me because I'm this and that and the other, right? I'm right. more involved or whatever I was telling myself. But I heard the thoughts, oh, he wouldn't do that with me. And I was like, I, I think my mouth dropped open because I thought, oh, this is it. This is the moment where I'm not listening to what he's saying. Mm-hmm. Men tell you the truth from the get-go. Yeah. They tell you exactly who they are and exactly who they are not. And we don't listen. If we can just listen to what they're saying, and not second guess it, not try to talk them out of it, not try to even understand it. Just listen to it, absorb it, hmm. And then watch, and I know you know all this, it's so fun to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, like watch how they, this man shows up, watch how this partner shows up, mm-hmm. observe. Hmm, interesting, okay, let's see how he shows up next time. Is it consistent? Yeah. Are words and actions matching up? Mm-hmm. Are they ghosting you? Are they calling it uh, like every day for five days and then they're gone for two weeks? Mm-hmm. Right? What's mm-hmm. actually happening? Because whatever they're doing in the in the dating realm, they're gonna do in the relationship. Oh, absolutely so you have to be right. To say no, right? You have to be willing to say a clear no so that you actually can feel a clear yes. Mm, absolutely to say no to anybody who's not giving you really what you are desiring but you have to do it from a perspective of observing yes and of course for the anxious attachment style that's like the hardest thing because they live in certainty right so they're like i even if i have to project something onto the wall that has nothing to do with that person that's in front of me i'm going to do that because it gives me this illusion of oh i feel certainty i don't have to be with this tension now right but right. then what's interesting now, I want to hear your thought on that, is that actually they actually know that there is this tension. They know it's just a shadow on the wall on some level, mm-hmm. and that it's not the reality that's right in front of them. Right. And so what's your experience with that? You know, those women being in that tension and on some level denying it and being like, no, 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 he is this person that's on the wall. Even if it's just kind of like, I don't really have things to back it up. And yeah, he's inconsistent in his communication, but you know, he's busy and whatever, whatever. And, and on the other hand, then why they're anxious? Because they know there's this tension. They know that that's so far away from what's actually happening right now, right? So, so what do you tell those women? I, I actually really love this question because when a woman is basically telling herself a story, Mm-hmm. And she's in a dating relationship. I, I love this part because what I recommend that they do is they don't leave right away. That they actually stay for some period of time and use it as a scientific exploration into mm-hmm. themselves. Mm-hmm. So I, I recommend that they stay and they observe scrupulously. 
so diligent with their observation of what's going on internally because whatever they're willing to accept in the outside world they're also accepting in their internal world and if they can start to uncover how that happens and they do that from the perspective of i'm going to observe how i'm interacting with this person in real life and then i'm going to go home and i'm going to go hmm why did i make that choice how did he show up? How did I respond? What was my internal dialogue? What was going on emotionally? If they start to observe themselves in real time, then they're going to build the skill of observation. They're going to build that skill of having a little bit of emotional detachment because you're a scientist. You're looking through, you know, your little right, thing. Right, you're a researcher. Um, exactly. Yeah, you're yeah. Research. Like, hmm, I wonder. And you get curious. Curiosity, I think, is the most important quality to develop in our lives. Totally. Right? Curiosity. So if they're curious enough, then they can actually see the truth of how they're showing up. And then they can have a clear yes to this partner or a clear no. And when it's a clear no, it's not just because they feel like it's a clear no. They have scientific proof of why it's a clear no so that they will not recreate that the next time. Oh, I love that because then, you know, they don't just say no out of principle, but they actually now they have, you know, it's a backed up energy, right? It's like a, there's much more certainty behind that, right? right? And conscientiousness versus just doing it. Okay, I know I need to honor myself. I need to be the queen. And Right. But then they do the same thing in the next relationship. Exactly. They don't really know why. So they start to say, okay, what do I really want in a relationship? Here's what I really want. Here's my vision. Now, what's the truth of what's happening now? Mm -hmm. And how am I contributing to that? And how is my partner contributing? Mm -hmm. If I'm the one that's causing a problem because I'm being too controlling, then that's my work. Mm -hmm. If it's the partner that's primarily having the issue because they're, you know, they're ghosting or they're, you know, they're not returning calls, et cetera, or they're not showing up in a way that makes her feel valued and and cherished and loved right then then that's something to look at or if it's a combination then it's it's time for a conversation hey i notice i'm showing up like this i notice you're showing up like that i don't enjoy that and have an honest conversation about it yeah so it needs an opening for a real conversation yes and absolutely. then when you have that kind of clarity like oh the reason i'm leaving this relationship is because these pieces are not in place now it's not personal about the person mm -hmm. it's because you know what i think you're amazing and i don't like to go two weeks without talking right i don't like to not have somebody open the door for me while we're going out to a nice dinner that's just those are things i really those things are important to me and you don't do them naturally and that's okay but i see that I really need those things and therefore this is not a good match for me. Yeah, absolutely. And I chose absolutely. a couple of mundane examples, but sometimes those mundane things are because of deeper reasons why somebody won't do those basic things, right? Mm -hmm. How, how mm -hmm. they show up consistently and, and, and how they take care of their partner. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really so true. And I, I remember when I had my breakthrough and I realized, I actually wrote down when I had, a, I just had phone conversations with a guy, like five, but in my mind, I was already in a relationship. But I remember like that moment when I just realized, oh my God, I filled in all those blanks. Like all what happened was like five phone conversations. They weren't even long. They were like 15 or 20 minutes long. And I still have my calendar because I wrote that down. And that research moment where I just like, wait a minute, this is crazy crazy mm -hmm. how did that happen right and to just be like okay how can i bring how can i wheel it in when i notice i'm projecting right and actually be like no 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 wait what's actually happening here like what has actually happened you know versus versus like what could be or you know what's the dream solution right that we have we have to look at the facts we have to look at you know we get very emotional about a relationship of course because it's emotional and especially in the beginning when you're dating, you have to look with objective lenses. You have to take a look at the truth of how you're showing up and how your partner's showing up. Are you showing up as your best self, right? And your authentic self, like if you're super controlling but you're trying to be a free flow bohemian, like don't do that. 
<laughs> just be right. who you are. Yeah. Just be who you are, right? Exactly. Like, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a little, a little uh, personal thing here. When the first time my sweetheart and I made love, I told him I loved him. Total taboo, big no-no. You're never supposed to do that, right? Right. Because that's who I am. If I yes. feel something, I say it. And I said to him, I hope you take this in the way that I mean it because I actually really like love everyone. I really love you. And, and he, he, he learned something important about me on that day. And that's who I am. And if somebody can't handle that, then they can't handle me anyway. Right. And what I really realized from what you just shared, Marla, it's really, you were confident with saying that, right? So it wasn't someone, that's what he picked up on. Yes. Like you, you backed up energetically what you said versus like, oh no, I don't really mean it. And you know, that's what so many women do, right? They say one thing and then they see the partner doesn't react in a way that they were hoping for. They're like, well, I mean, you know, I just kind of said it or I was drunk or you know, whatever, right? Don't own it. That is true. You right? have to know who you are. Yeah. Right? Totally. If you want to know who you are dating, then you're going to sway with the wind of whoever the other person is, right? So I know you teach a lot of this. So knowing yourself, like, look, I have a lot of parts of me that some people love, some people don't love so much. I have a little uh, part in me. I call her Sally Know-It-All because she knows everything and she'll tell you, right? <laughs> and, and my little Unsolicited, Sally right? <laughs> my Unsolicited. Little Sally Know-It-All pops up and, and she's lovely, but she's so annoying at the wrong times. Right. Right. And so I know that about myself. So she pops out and somebody goes, God, you're such a know-it-all, Marla. I would say, I know. I totally go there. <laughs> yeah. Is it bothering you? Should I put her away? You know, what's going on? And then you can be more playful with yourself and more confident when you know who you are and you know those little darker, uglier parts that, you know, it's like I have a controlling nature also, which is very helpful in business, not so helpful in relationship. Right, right. You gotta know where to shine that light. <laughs> you know, and just be like, okay, I'm letting go. Yeah, you know, not that I know anything about that, right? Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I really feel that that's so true. Like sometimes, you know, even like I had a client that she's like, you know, I, I'm like afraid to be this bitch. I'm like, yeah, I have to tell you, you're the bitch. And you're like, absolutely, I'm a bitch. You better believe it, boyfriend, right? And so people are just like, oh, they're not used to that. They're used to being able to manipulate people through their responses. And if you're absolutely, I can be a monster. Absolutely, I can be a bitch, right? I can be control freak. And to just like own that, like how juicy that feels, right? It's like, oh. It, it, it feels juicy. And also, if you do it from the perspective that I teach my clients, it's very connecting. It's not separating. It's actually mm -hmm. inclusive mm -hmm. and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And it creates a deeper intimacy when you do it from the perspective of what I call extreme honesty. Extreme honesty yeah. is not a big excuse to vent and say anything you want. Extreme right. honesty means I have something I've been keeping in that I really want to share with you that's really makes me nervous to share and yet I'm going to share it anyway. And mm -hmm. you do the perspective of wanting to connect on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. And that's what I practice and that's what I teach. And I think that my experience for all these years is when a couple can come from that perspective of, I really want to share the truth with you and I want to hear the truth. So don't tell me yes, dear, or don't tell me yes, if it's really a maybe or really a no, mm -hmm. even though I will continue to send mixed messages, I will continue to send the message of, I want what I want when I want it and tell me the truth. Right? right. That's right. the message. I want what I want. And yet I want you to tell me what you really want. Right. It's so confusing for our partners. And so, you know, like um, last year I told my partner that I was going to go to Paris for the month of February to lead private retreats for couples. And I said, I'd love for you to come for any of or all of it. And he said, I think that's a no for me. I don't really want to go. And I said, and I, of course, I, oh, 
not what I wanted to hear, right? Yes. And internally, as and I said to him, well, that's not my, you know, desire. My desire would be for you to come and thank you for telling me the truth. And if that changes, let me know. And then yeah. I have to deal with my reaction, which is, oh man, what a bummer. He didn't want to go. Then a couple months later, he came to his own conclusion, separate from me. I never asked him about it ever again after that. He right. said, you know what, babe, I do want to go. I want to go and I want to, you know, and he ended up coming out for 10 days in the middle of my 30 day thing. He was there for Valentine's day, took me on a beautiful romantic cruise, like, you know, and yet I was okay with his no. We have to be okay with our partners. No. And in fact, encourage it. And Absolutely. So in a dating situation, right? You have to be okay if your, if your date says no to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what I see what you're really talking about is that interdependence, right? Where like the codependence would be, yes, dear, and then resent you secretly, you know, but if I be like dependent on your positive response and like, but I made her happy, I made her smile, right? Versus like keeping that edge and, and being interdependent. So that's what I really hear. Yes. From and it's very vulnerable. It's very vulnerable yeah. to live in that space because he could say no to, to anything. I could ask for I, something and he could say no. And yet he tells me, you know, it's the most free he's ever right. felt in his whole life in a relationship right. because he can tell me the truth no matter how hard the truth is because yeah. I'm going to receive it because, and my first response to him always, and I would suggest this for all of your your audience is say thank you first. So when your partner tells you the truth of how he feels, stop and say, you know, thank you for telling me that. Yeah. I really appreciate you telling me the truth of how you feel. And just pause because that alone will blow their mind out of the water. Right. Right. Oh, I'm not going to get a big backlash. Like or passive aggression or, or withdrawal, like the silent treatment, right? Okay. Oh. You know, just Right. I'm fine. Whatever. Right. Yes. Right. So just say, thank you. Thank you. And I say that to him all the time. I'm like, babe, thank you for having the courage to tell me no. Like not a lot of people tell me no. <laughs> <Right>? so, <laughs> not a lot of people dare to tell me no. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that you can tell me no. <laughs> totally. Oh, I could talk with you forever. Yeah, Mala. And we're at the end of this particular episode. And I'm sure that listeners like so thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm wondering, gosh, how do I get in contact with this marvelous woman? Oh, yes, absolutely. If anyone's interested in contacting me, Facebook is actually a great way to contact me uh, through my personal or my professional page, Marla Mattinson. And you can also go to marlamattinson.com, which is my website, and send me a private message through that way. Awesome. So great. Yeah. So reach out to Mala. She has a wealth of knowledge. Like this is just like kind of, we barely scrapped the surface here. We just want to give you a little snack, a little ahi tuna, you know? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It was so nice to have you. And again, for the listeners, this is Anja Boyd, your host, founder of findingonelite.com. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.